Let's talk about Drake Maverick, who uh, came out to congratulate Fantasma for his win uh, last week in the Cruiserweight Interim Championship Tournament doodad, whatever it was. Uh, Drake Maverick, I think, is going to have an amazing storyline coming out of this. I think Drake Maverick, uh, as much as I've sort of said it, I, I'm not... I'm not overly convinced about the using somebody's real life horrible circumstances for the sake of storyline, especially when other people were still just going through that normally um, without the uh, light at the end of the tunnel of, well, maybe you get an NXT contract. Um, I don't think it's necessarily the best thing to have done. It made for a good story out of that context and it was played perfectly by Drake Maverick. And I think this payoff here is very good, except for the fact it's the most obvious reveal that I think NXT <laughs> has ever done. So what happens is Drake Maverick comes out to congratulate Fantasma, says we didn't get a chance to speak last week. And I just want to say thank you so much for the amazing match. Uh, uh, you truly deserve to win the belt. I, I know that a lot of the spotlight was on me after the match because of what happened, but I just want to say that the spotlight should have been on you. Um, I've had a lot of my mind, as you can tell, for the past few months, but uh, I'd like to see what would happen if we had a match for that without that. Um, mm, playing brilliant promo. Yeah. Really, really good. Uh, no, no kind of, don't have to do any, any gimmick, any silliness with it, just pure baby face. Mm. Um, everything made sense, uh, referenced the last match, um, gave us as the crowd an actual reason to oh yeah of course because yeah you you were a bit of a mess um and yeah it, oh this is a logical next step brilliant work by drake and i'm really glad that kind of it was it was it wasn't a full stop at the end of his story getting that contract uh from triple h which he didn't read again so mm. he's he's in, in he's, he could be in anything yeah. yeah 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 uh but <laughs> he, i'm glad that this they, they, they're just doing, they're continuing that story. And I thought this was a, a brilliant development. Um, mm -hmm. What happens? What happens next? What happens next? It was obvious. Yes. Oh, yeah. But I mean, all, we'd already seen him unmasked in, <laughs> like, in his initial introduction package, we saw Phantasma, like, unmasked in a suit. Uh yeah, it kind of removes some of the magic of like, you know, there is still a bit of a reverence of luchadors unmasking themselves in wrestling. You know, it's still a very kind of significant symbol. Uh, and we'd already seen him without the mask on uh, wandering around. So, yeah, I just think it's a bit it's it, it was a bit too obvious what was going to happen, but I still like it. Yeah, um, I think it's one of those things like, it, would you rather have NXT seems a bit obvious, but it makes sense and it feels generally kind of satisfying like oh okay mm. all the points line up or would you rather have a main roster where they swerve you for the sake of unpredictability with something that actually doesn't line up at all because like yeah the seeds have been planted for this for ages like anyone with half a wrestling brain says that, okay he's he's the leader of these two mm. masked men uh, i do like the fact that the two masked men turned out to be the men who were kidnapped yeah. I thought that was that was a uh, fun because yeah, it turns out that Raul, Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wild, uh, they also unmasked themselves uh, along with the new Santos Escobar, uh, which is a fantastic name. He's Mexican, so he has to have <laughs> <laughs> he has to have a Latin name that uh, people know as a bad name. Escobar. You, you guys remember Escobar, right? But you uh, do. So they are uh, they are a new uh, stable. Uh, I think I think they're great. Like I'm actually glad that he's not doing the full King Cuerno uh, thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad that like NXT is giving him his own uh, personality. Uh, I for me like, this is my favorite segment in in this episode of NXT uh, because yeah, predictable but a bold step forward. Uh, both characters come out. Uh, like both Drake and uh, now Santos Escobar come out with stuff to do. I'm excited mm. to see the match. Uh, I think it's going to be a brilliant, like stable, like it's going to do wonders for Mendoza and Wild. Yeah, uh, I think they, really... they were completely uh, directionless for so long. Mm. Yeah, I, I really like this. I loved the the. I, I liked. I really. I enjoyed the imagery of him taking the mask off, like while well, he's sort of got his his feet round Drake's neck and he says I'm Santos Escobar I'm the cruiserweight champion and then Mendoza and Wild leap in with splashes and he sort of snaps the neck as well mm. with his he did the sort of foot snap that was really cool and they stand over the down Drake Maverick 
It is exactly what you want to do. I think it, it's a brilliant little spot because it um, not only positions Escobar's uh, cartel, I guess we'll call it for now, like because he's an Escobar. Uh, it positions... Oh, they're going to be called that, aren't they? They're going to yeah. be called the cartel. Yeah, so it's going to position those guys. It positions those guys really strongly. It makes it gives you a story to to run with in the cruiserweight division. Uh, I think that can control the cruiserweight division in a really clever way. Um, it also just Drake Maverick has just had like the highest point of his career, I think, coming out of an, one of his low points, and he's been kicked right back down to the low point again. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised if they wrote him out injured for two weeks or something with this. They should, and and they should. I think they should build this up for as long as possible for Drake getting back into a cruiserweight championship opportunity against Escobar. They shouldn't. They shouldn't expedite this. They should really draw this out. Drake should be an underdog for a good couple of months here and slowly build into that Cruiserweight Championship match, stack the deck against him as much as possible and then pay off in a massive way at TakeOver. And that then is he wins it. Do. And then Jordan Devlin immediately comes back. See, but he, this, is, this, is, <laughs> this is the best use of Drake. Drake. Drake having the belt is nowhere near as interesting as Drake chasing the belt. <laughs>